manifesting courage despite challenges. I hear you, sir. This is the first day to March prophetic week. March week of prophetic solution. And God will grant you solution to that problem this same week in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the first day. Tomorrow, Thursday is the second day and Friday is the third day. Yes, Before these three days of communion and fellowship is over, you will truly have a testimony on Sunday Easter. Amen. I decree you will have a testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, the topic for today is manifesting courage despite challenges. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 30 will be the cause of discussion today. Exodus 13, 14, verse 13 to 20. But before we read that, I want to tell you this. Courage means the ability to control your fear in a dangerous or difficult situation. The ability to move forward despite the challenges that pulls you backward. The ability to believe that things can still work well despite the seeming challenges. It means to be brave. Joshua 1 6 to 9 before we go to the exodus he says be strong and courageous for you shall cause these people to inherit the land that i swore to their fathers to give them hear me the land was sworn to abraham but the land needed joshua's courage for the children of israel to enter a promise that was given abraham Yet it is the courage of another man that can determine if the children of Abraham can enter. The next generation unborn cannot touch what they need to touch until with courage you build a fence of demarcation that demarcates you from what your grandfather suffered in order for you to build a new scenario for the next coming generation. I don't know if I'm making sense now. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. The next generation, the next children coming, those who will call you uncle, auntie in the future, they are at the mercy of the courage you can be able to display now. Because your father folded his arms. Your grandfather folded their hands. Grandmother folded their arms. And you came and you are seeing what you don't like. So the next generation has to be in a palatable situation. A situation where they can thank God. If only you can demonstrate courage now, 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 now. The past generations didn't demonstrate courage. They didn't manifest it. You have to manifest it. Someone say, I will manifest courage in my generation. I will manifest courage in my generation. Say, I will manifest courage. I will manifest courage. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. What is that situation that has posed itself against your elder sister? Post the self against your elder brother. Post the self against your father. Post the self against your brothers. Bible says, let me start to tell you, fear not for I am with you. Somebody say, I will not fear. I will not fear. For God is with me. For God is with me. Now, in the book of Exodus, we will be learning from 14, 13 to 30, is the story of the Red Sea. And the biblical Red Sea in our text is one of the warmest of the world sea located in middle east between egypt and saudi arabia but spiritually and contextually as it connects to our teaching tonight the red sea symbolizes evil the red sea symbolizes sickness the red sea symbolizes poverty the red sea symbolizes barrier between you and your next testimony. The rest is symbolizes causes. It symbolizes death, shame, and anything that makes you afraid or terrified of which you have prayed to God and you don't know how to overcome it. Overcome it. After this night, there is this courage that will be coming upon you like a clutter. Yeah. And the Red Sea will give way. Yeah. The Red Sea shall give way. Yeah. That Red Sea shall give way. Yeah. As I spoke, so shall it be. Yeah. Steps to crossing the Red Sea before you. Exodus 14 verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand see and see the salvation of the Lord, which he had accomplished for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them no more. How can you tell a people pursued by the Egyptians? Before them is the Egyptians with chariots. 
darts, arrows to kill them. Before them is a, a, a huge body of, body of water that could swallow them. And the leader tells them, stand still. In this generation, they will tell the children of, they would save it under fire that prophet. Me, stand still. You see, these ones are coming. This one is coming. Oh God, you did not hear God well. This generation, that's what they will tell you. You did not hear God well. Stand still. But let me tell you this. Until you stand still, God can manifest. Refuse to be afraid in the presence of any rest facing you now. Until you stay calm, meaning stand still, in the presence of storm, you can't hear God to know what next step to take. It is when he told them, stand still, the next verse now say, what is in your hand? It is with that rod you stretch and every apart. That time, everybody is patubing, shouting. He can't hear God clearly that time. If you're, you are so bothered about your problem, you are telling God I can solve it. You are so bothered about that situation, you are telling God I can solve it. But sometimes, calm down. Calm down. Stand still in the presence of that Red Sea. Stand still before that Egyptian is coming behind you. Because an Igbo song says, O bindere ju atolojo, O bindere ju, Chukumari yomo kemere mo, O bindere ju, O bindere ju atolojo, O bindere ju, Chukumari yomo kemere mo, O bindere ju, O bindere ju atolojo, O bindere ju, Chukumari. In case you don't hear Igbo, that song means my soul, calm down. Calm down. God knows the good thing he will do for me. Hear me? You may not have eaten the best of meal today. Calm down. Yes. You may not have worn the best of clothes today. Calm down. That sickness looks like it wants to kill you. Calm down. God knows what best he has for you. Am I speaking to somebody now? In the midst of that situation, do what? Tell your neighbor, relax. Relax. Tell them relax like Jericho. Relax like Jericho. I know. Say it to her. Relax like Jericho. Relax, relax like Jericho. It's, it's only women that know what Jericho, Jericho is. You know, when this hair is top on his standing, they say this I want you to fall. They put that in the cupboard. So relax, Abby. Yes. So they now leave it for some minutes. Cook it. Now wash it. Before you know it's top on hair that was standing. They used to call it virgin hair, right? They now falls the akata. God says, relax. I know what best to do for you. Yes, sir. In your family, you will be a testifier. Amen. In your street, they will see you and say, This is not the person we knew before. Amen. You will enter your street and say, No, be this person where they beg us Gary, to drink with this. Amen. No, be this person where they beg school fees every time with this. Amen. No, be this person where they find where to sleep with this. Amen. I hit my hand on this altar and I speak into your life as a prophet sent by God. Yes, before this year is over, a new shepherd to skate and panu katia. Decree by the fire of the Holy Ghost yes, and by the mercies of the living God. Yes, I kneel on this altar before this year is over. Your testimony church now. Yes. Signs and wonder will locate you. Yes. You will enter your village, they will not know you. Yes. You will enter your streets, they will not know you. Yes. Those who laugh at you will see that God has changed your testimony. Yes, you will manifest courage to take over your generation. Amen. Amen. Hear me? God needs your heart to perform the miracle of victory. Yes, yes, sir. God does what? He needs your heart. Because the miracle must start from the heart. Not from your eyes. Not what you are seeing. What you are seeing is the pain. What you are seeing is, the, is, 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 uh, is artificial. What is happening is already has started in the spirit. And the only way you connect to your spirit is the heart. So God needs your heart. So in that, before that rest scene, calm down. The next thing you have to do, Exodus 14, 14. We are reading for, from 13 to where we could uh, can end today. The Lord will fight for you. Amen. And Amen. he shall hold your peace. That is Exodus Amen. chapter 14. The Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. Hear me. Depend totally on God. In order for you to manifest courage, do what? Depend, Depend totally on God. God. Trust and obey. For there is no other way. To be joyful in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust on him, rely on him, rely, just depend on him. Dependable God, dependable God. 
dependable God. Dependable God. Dependable God. Don't give up on God. For he won't give up on you. He said, oh. Am I speaking to somebody now? Yes, yes sir. Deep be laughing at you. Let them be saying what they say. Let them gossip. Sometimes you hear them say they call your name. Depend on your God. Yes, Don't sir. saw your hand. Don't join them. Don't do anything bad. Don't go their way. Depend on God. God. Depend what? On God. God. Three. Exodus 13 verse 15. That God said he will fight for you does not mean the battles end there. Hear me. Exodus Chapter 13, verse 15 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Now, for God to tell you he will fight for you does not mean he will do everything. That is why we're talking about manifesting courage in the face of challenges. You have something to do. There is river before them. Now, what am I calling river? Ocean, body of water. Jesus, he told them, move forward. Move. You are seeing body of water and they're telling you, move forward. Hear me? You must do your part of the deal. Courage this determines that courage means that you must do your you must be determined to play your own role am i speaking to somebody now yes sir until you believe god you cannot move with faith and faith only works with work itself you must work it out in every challenge you have prayed to god about hear me he has an instruction for you and until you move forward with that instruction to obey the instruction, the Red Sea cannot give way. It can be just praise the Lord, you screaming hallelujah, Red Sea gives way. It can be just shout Jesus' name seven times, and some people say it four times, some three times. You who completed seven times, the next Sunday they see somebody testifying. They don't know one mystical and mysterious instruction that you look so casual that you obeyed. Never take instructions casual. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Number four. Exodus 13, 13 verse 16. But lift up your rod, he was telling Moses, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Hear me. The rod Moses used to divide the Red Sea represents the word of God. And there is always a prophet, a pastor, an apostle with a word from God to you. He lifted up the rod and the people crossed. And I am lifting a rod before you now. The rod represents the word I am giving to you. And I am telling you that situation will not swallow you. Amen. You will not die in the midst of that problem. Amen. You will not die in the midst of that problem. Amen. I say you shall not die in the midst of that problem. Amen. As I spoken, so shall it be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because Jeremiah 3 verse 15 says, And I will give you a pastor according to my heart, yes, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I am making you to understand this night that that situation will turn around. Amen. Amen. Just a little courage. Stand with a little courage. Tell your neighbor, show it courage. Show it courage. Now, why are we faced with challenges in some points of our lives? Why are we faced with these Red Seas in some points of our life? Why, Pastor, why? Watch your life. Maybe you don't even like doing bad or all this, but it looks as if the challenge is too much with you. Some people who live all manner of life, see them prostitution, all manner of life. They never fall sick. They never steal from them. Nothing bad happens to them. You that say, let me, I want to just serve God. It looks as if the challenge is too much on you. Let me tell you something. I made a post on my media page this morning. I said, if the devil has attacked you severally, it means that your destiny is not useless. No one ever throws a stone at an empty tree of mango. It is a mango with a ripe fruit that children coming back from school with stone, even though the mango tree is in another man's fence. Am I speaking to somebody now? Yes, yes, sir. That the devil is attacking you means your destiny is not useless. You have a very powerful destiny he wants to destroy. But God will destroy the devil. Amen. Amen. Hear me now. Why are we faced with challenges sometimes? Number one, to build your spiritual muscle and bring out the best from you. Yes, sir. Not all problems, sickness, evil, and fights against you are meant to kill you. Some were allowed by God to bring out the real person he made you to be. Most of us discovered our cause when we were pushed out of our place of comfort. Which means if we are, most of us, if we are still at our comfort zone, what God is using us to do today 
it would not have been able to manifest. Oh, I would have been crying. This has been taken out of my hands. But God has a reason for allowing some trials come your way. Why do we see some challenges? Number two, to glorify God. Hear me. Exodus 13 verse 17 says, And indeed, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them even into the Red Sea. I will, they will not go back. Leave them. So that I will gain honor from them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. God's role in securing believers during moment of trials before we pray. As a believer, there is nothing you are passing through now that can end your life. Hear me? You will rather see the end and testify. I thought someone would say amen. Yeah. amen. There is nothing you are passing through. Hear me? That we see your end. You will see the end. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. Yes, sir. You will see the end. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, There had no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. It's a common thing. Commonize that situation. Even in the presence of the Red Sea, in Israelites, confusion and fear, God still sent angels to protect them. And that is exactly what he does to us when we pass through the Red Sea of life. In front of that Red Sea, the angel was before them. Exodus 13, 19 to 20 says, and the angel of, the, of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them so it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel thus it was a cloud and darkness to the other and it gave light by night and the other so that the one did not come near the other all the night in the daytime he will give them light in the night he will give them light in the midst of that red sea god will guide you amen, amen. i said he will guide you amen god will push you to a place of testimony amen. amen i want to assure you that before these three days are over as we take some prophetic prayer serious god will push you to a place of testimony amen. i said god will push you to a place of testimony amen. stand to your feet as we join our voices and prayers this evening it's a short charge it's a short charge Somebody point your right hand in heaven now and say, Oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, Lord my Father. Father. By your very words. By your very words. Which I have heard today. Which I have heard today. Divide every Red Sea. Divide every Red Sea. Red Sea of sorrow. Red Sea of sorrow. Red Sea of sickness. Red Sea of sickness. Red Sea of poverty. Red Sea of poverty. Red Sea of untimely death. That Satan has sent to this church. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Every Red Sea, Father divided. Father divided. Every Red Sea divided. Father divide them, Father divide them, Father divide them, Father divide them. Father divide those red seas. Jehovah divide those red seas. Every red sea of sickness, every red sea of poverty, every red sea of untimely death, every red sea of sickness. Father divide them. Father divide them. Father divide them. Jehovah remove them. Jehovah remove them. Jehovah remove them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Say, Oh Lord, my Father, oh, Lord, my the father. same problems eh, problem. than the enemy thought will swallow me. Let, let them see me walk out of it alive. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. open your mouth and pray that prayer. Lord, Lord, that same sickness, eh, that same problem Lord, that the Lord, enemy Lord, thought will swallow me. Lord, I am coming out alive. 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 I am coming out al